I've returned once again from the South Puget Sound board game convention. This is the second board game event in the South Puget Sound, and it was the third day, the Sunday, that was free. Um, I decided I would kind of let my gaming be free. I had taken all my games home the night prior because I had a ride, and it made it easier to get them all home than to have them in a big bag. Um, and so I kind of went in, and there were games going on. Um, none of them had space for another, so I did a cross. Well, one of them did actually. I just didn't want to play it. Um, so I did a crossword puzzle for a while, um, and I got it finished, which is good. Just in time to play um, Homesteaders. Now, Homesteaders is a game that, on its surface, might be a game I wouldn't like. Um, I've played it once before, and so acquiesced to play it again because I do like the game. All right, um, it's a game where you do bidding, which I don't generally like and you build buildings in order to get victory points, and I don't normally like that either. But um, unlike the games I played on Pi Day, it doesn't feel so arbitrary, uh, even though it maybe is in, in a lot of respects. Um, like anything that just kind of gives you points. Like, I didn't, I didn't feel like there was any real narrative there. Um, maybe because it's short enough, or I don't know, the, the game kind of flows well, and um, it's kind of fun to do the thing where you're trading with your little trade chips to try and make change to get the the certain resource you need to build a building. And even if you don't get a building on the auction, you at least get to move along the railroad. Choo choo! So that was fine. Um, after that, I played a game called Guards Guards! Exclamation point, exclamation point! After each guards. And I liked exclamation points, and so I played that game. Um, it was fine. Uh, didn't really... So in the game you're... It's a Discworld game. I don't know if you're familiar with that novel series. Um, but you are trying to get these magic spells, return these magic spells, but you can't really... I, I felt like there was no self in the game, which was odd because you're supposed to be a person, but um, the person you are is very abstracted. Unlike these other games, a lot of games you're, you're a force. A narrative force kind of pulling for a certain person and you're trying to kind of make things go well for a person or for a community or for a nation or whatever. This game you're doing that for a person but everything you do pretty much is via these henchmen that you're recruiting through the game. Now my playing of the game was kind of skewed because um, I think the person who was teaching it didn't know all the rules. He definitely didn't because another guy who was new to the game kept been very likes to look up rules and stuff. Uh, found numerous rules he didn't know and I found some too just looking at the player aid. Um, and so I don't know if we were playing the actual game or not but I still think that you're not really there's it's it, it's interesting that you're not really identifying with the person you are at all. Um, gameplay was fine. It was kind of like a take that adventure game I would say. Um, but the take that is not narrative force take that except for when you're moving this um, chest, this um, suitcase luggage that's going around the board and bowling everything over. Um, that you can kind of steer a little bit uh, and that moves whenever you hire people. So a lot of the game is just hiring people and then sending them to do things for you. Um, so that was all I played. I bought some games. There's a silent auction at both of the South Sound board game conventions I went to. Um, and I got some games for pretty cheap. Uh, I got Panic Station for $5, only one who bid on it. Um, a friend of mine who I game with and the person I bought it from both said the same thing, but it might be because they also game with each other. Um, or that also probably because it's true. You need to, everyone who's playing really needs to know how to play the game and know the rules, which is not true of a lot of games. Um, but is often true of these kind of like semi-cooperative games where there's a chance of betrayal. I think it's problematic when the person who ends up uh, engaged in the betrayal or whatever. I don't know a lot about this game, but I remember there's something about it that I liked, I think, probably because it was semi-cooperative. Um, 
they need to know those rules, know, know how to play the game. Because uh, if apparently if someone doesn't know how to play the game, it kind of messes the whole game up. But if everyone knows how to play, it's supposed to be great. And so I got that, $5. Can't argue with that. And I got Phantom Society also for $5. I know nothing of this. Um, yeah, I can't say anything about the Phantom Society except that it was $5. Uh, I got Funny or Die, which is a party game. Uh, it cost me a dollar. It involves juxtaposition, looks like, which is fun for me. I enjoy juxta like, I think if you can juxtapose things that aren't necessarily meant to go together, it can lead to some interesting meanings or be funny or die. -y. Um, I probably wouldn't buy this game for more than a dollar, but yeah, it could be fun. Kind of an apples to apples -y thing, and I don't mind that game. I got Anzio. I've had this game once before. I traded it away because I found something else I wanted better. Um, but I found it for $10, so I, I got it. Yeah, and that was it. Um, the, the, second, the second board game convention was definitely quieter than the first. Um, there was a lot of excitement building up to the first time. I think because they had they they are having two a year, and this one came right after the winter. And if you're not from the Pacific Northwest or from the far north, um, or the further north of the United States, or wherever you are, northern latitudes, um, you may not know. During the winter, people get kind of sleepier and just kind of like more. Mm. So we're coming off that. So there's definitely less energy going into anything. It's just kind of harder to do things. And there's a lot of emotions that churn up. Um, and then also, there was just one in last October. And so they didn't, you know, a lot, a lot of times people put a lot more into the first thing. And this, none of this is a criti criticism. I don't think it needs to have all these special events. Just going there for the weekend and playing games. And there, it's, there's always coffee on tap. There's snacks that people just leave out. Like there was a styrofoam cup that kept that like was always always had beef jerky in it. I would see the levels of beef jerky rise and fall, but it was <laughs> really bizarre. Um, there was a, like a box of pizza at one point. Um, these two trays with um, cream cheese filled wraps, and then a cheese plate was there at one point. Um, just to give you some inclination, very cozy. Uh, I found a super comfy chair in the kitchen that I got to use, um, and that. That made it really nice. And people really deferred to me using that chair, which I also really appreciated. I could just use the chair, and no one took my chair the whole time. So lots of fun. I look forward to the next one in October. Um, it'll probably be a different feel, because then it's coming off with the energy of the summer, which is a lot more like, uh, So that's your game in the world.